be self-sufficient. Hello and welcome to uh, our next podcast, number three, I think it is. I've lost count already, but there you go. I'm very, very fortunate to have a friend who, JP, who is here with me, and he's the guy that does all the twiddling and pressing buttons and sets things up. Uh, He's also very inquisitive, and he tends to ask me questions all the time about various things. Met him uh, a few years ago when he wanted to learn about gardening, and uh, I was in a position where I was happy to help him along and he did a lot of the physical sides of things for a, a year or two and uh, now he's moved on to the, uh, the the technical whiz kid stuff with photography and computers and microphones and so on uh, so he jp we call him uh, paul i call him so here we go i've had a look around your property and it's amazing i mean we're in a, a large greenhouse now. Is this new, this greenhouse? Yeah? Yes, this is about three years old. I built this uh, three years ago, and it's a, a large construction, about seven metres by just under five metres. Uh, it's wow. entirely devoted to the growing of food, um, and it's developed in such a way that because our property is on a relatively steep slope, about a one in five slope, that's about 20 to 25 degrees, most of it. Um, It contains raised beds, but they're made level in such a way that the uh, lower half is raised up level with the upper part. And each of the beds is reached from a narrow path on each side of it. That's about 15 beds I can see here. Individual beds. I mean, uh, there are big beds split into three. And they're all surrounded by kind of silver corrugated iron and filled with earth. What, four foot high? Yeah. Some of them, yeah? Yeah. And, and um, you've got some plants started off already, I can see. Um, what are those at the back there? Yeah, so we'll up at the, the top flowers. there in the upper bed. Um, we've got some uh, first early potatoes. There's just uh, six plants there of first early potatoes. I've also got some of those in large pots in, a, in the small greenhouse. Um, but those we'll be eating uh, very soon now. Uh, generally speaking, by May, you have to wait another three or four weeks to get any out of the ground outside, but by having them in the greenhouse, um, we'll be eating our own new potatoes um, in the early part of May. Yes, there are some... How big is it, this this space? This space is, well, each of the beds is um, about 2.4 metres, that's eight foot long, and um, 1.2 metres, that's four foot wide. Um, There are three of those, and one long bed, which again is 1.2 metres, um, about four foot wide. Um, it's a fraction narrower, that one, actually, because it's only accessible from one side because it runs right along on a slope. You could get about four vehicles, four cars in here, couldn't you? Yes, it would be about the size of to give you an um, idea a three about... or four car garage. It would yeah. be a, an equivalent size. And a yeah. height of? The height is fairly high. Um, it, Obviously, being on a sloping site from here, it looks as if it's about 20 foot. That's about five or six metres higher than where we are. It's not quite as much as that because the slope gives a a slightly false impression. But at the back, it's about um, nearly three metres high. And uh, down here, the the reason for that is that if you have a, a greenhouse or a polytunnel which is too low, the temperatures at certain times of the year get far too high and uh, will virtually kill anything within it. And you've got to water those areas even twice a day in, the, in late May and June and July. Whereas in here, because they've got a plenty of height, um, the very high temperatures will only be right up the top corner. And I can see lots of 
Yes, young got, plants around me, you've got... Yeah, those are all, all carrots. And those are in the trays these there? Are, these are young lettuces. Uh, all right. And what we do is we actually sow three or four different varieties of things at the same time. And the benefit of that is that they all mature at slightly different lengths of time before they're ready for consumption. Right. So in the um, pots beside you, for instance, there are about five pots there. Each of those is a different type of carrot. And a... that's a soaking tub. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, that's full of water. One, with the water. And this yeah. is another soaking tub. What I do is I don't actually water from the top. These are root crops, generally speaking, which um, if you just water from the top, very often the water won't get right down to the roots once the plants have established. They're fine when they're at a seed stage. You can then give them a sprinkle of water on the top. But once they've got their roots right down, and these are deep pots, they're about 10 inches, which is about um, 250 millimetres deep, these pots. These are all 22.5 kilogram tubs. Yes, those, that particular tub there, which is I use for soaking the pots in, I change the pots in there every five days, so I move them around. So one of those is in the pot, in that soaking pot for five days. Those uh, actually are, are from uh, a, a local farmer and uh, he was throwing them out. They're a single-use plastic, um, which is unbelievably wasteful because all that had in it was uh, an energy food for sheep or cattle. And uh, then at the end of the time when they've actually licked the goodness out of them, they just throw them away. Well, I don't like things thrown away if it can be avoided. Reusing, recycling. Reuse as much as possible. Upcycling. And then eventually they will go in, into the recycling, but at the moment. So, um, I don't know whether you should ask a gentleman this question. Your age. Well, I'm the, let's put it this way. I'm the wrong side of 80. You've been gardening and landscaping for years. So, how long? Well, I was brought up by... Um, parents who did believe in fresh fruit and vegetables um, and although our diet was relatively conventional and that was perfectly reasonable in those days um, the meat and two veg was the, the, considered the norm um, we're talking about the period just after the second world war and um, but my folks always agreed with lots of fresh fruit and vegetables and so I was actually brought up by people who were growing a major part of our vegetables, not really from a young age. Um, I learned landscaping myself. Um, I became a fireman when I was uh, 20 years of age, and uh, I spent over 30 years as a whole-time fireman. Okay, so in what role? There are, there are different roles in the fire service, aren't there? Yes. And so you were a firefighter? I was a, what's now called a firefighter. It was just fireman when I right, joined. Okay. Yeah. Um, because now that the ladies are part of the team, obviously they had to change it from firemen, and now that's why they're now called firefighters. Perfectly reasonable. Uh, so they've changed the name to incorporate uh, the ladies who now um, are in the service. And as long as they have the physical capability uh, that is re required of a firefighter, uh, that's fine. It's not a problem. Um, they did actually reduce some of the uh, physical demand uh, when they apply to be a uh, firefighter when ladies joined, but they're very close to what it was when I joined. Um, As a, and you would have used ropes and knots, which is where your knowledge of ropes and knots comes from. I guess. Yes, partly, but also I did quite a lot of sailing as a youngster. Ah. Um, and um, when you're sailing, you really need to know a certain number of good basic knots. Things like the reef and the clove hitch and the bowline are essential knots to be able to tie under all sorts of conditions. On the becky bend. Yeah, all sorts of things, um, and they're, they're all very useful. The um, ability to join lines of both equal and unequal thickness are and, very important. And chains, I understand. Chains, yes, they're fairly important. Chains are 
uh, important as far as anchorage is concerned um, because it's important. How many ropes and knots do you think you know? Oh, 20 at least. Obviously, I've built up the ability. I mean, as a junior officer, part of my job was teaching uh, knots and lines and so on with with people. People have a, a misunderstanding about ropes and knots and lines. A rope is 120 fathoms long, 720 feet. Um, really? And know. anything cut off that is called a line. So ah. that, that's why it's called ropes and lines and knots. Um, because a rope is the standard length that used to be used by sailing ships for anchorage. Um, and the chain would have been from the, the first 20 feet, six six meters or so from from the anchor itself and with obviously with very large boats it they'd have all chain all the way up to the boat but shall we say a medium or small yacht would have a a rope of varying lengths according to what type of boat they waters they were sailing in i've become fairly familiar with your land having worked here and learned under you under your tutorship which i've which, by the way, was brilliant. I just wondered how big this property is, your land. Our land that we've got here is just over one acre, which is just under half a hectare. If you look at the productive land per person on this planet, there is approximately one hectare, which is about 2.2 acres, per person on the planet of productive land. In other words, we have about a quarter, as there are two of us that we're feeding here, we have about a quarter of that proportion of land. And you put it to really good use, I have to say. I, mean, I, I walk around from one end to the other, from corner to corner. Every bit of land is put to productive use. Well, obviously we, use, we are using some land in other places. So we, we produce a little bit of hay, but I use that as the basis for hotbeds. our hotbed system. Yeah. Uh, which is used first thing in the early part of the year. Um, we make hay just as a way of keeping grass and then we soak it to help the hotbed get going. We did a video on that, didn't we? We did indeed. Um, and the reason you, you have this land and why well, you grow so many vegetables is because you're vegan. Yes. Uh, an ethical vegan, I understand. Uh, what, yes. What's an ethical vegan? Well, an ethical vegan is somebody who is very much aware of the world implications, the whole planet implications of a diet or a way of life. If you're an ethical vegan, it means that you don't necessarily have an excessive amount of um, fresh fruit or vegetables flown in from Africa or some other far off country. Uh, you can be a vegan perfectly well and eat nothing but pineapples and maunch two peas grown in Kenya and flown overnight uh, into the, this country. You can still be a vegan and do that. But I consider that to be excessive. Um, and in terms of climate change, it's obviously really bad news to have relatively small quantities of fresh food flown so, around the world. No animals. We don't have any animals. Um, you don't eat animals? No, I don't eat animals. Um, I used to. I was brought up in a conventional family, in conventional systems with meat and two veg. Um, but there are huge differences now because my parents didn't have any research behind them to know what was the correct food for a human being to eat. Luckily, we've had some fantastic research science done over the last uh, 30 years or so. And those research scientists have looked into all the sort of anthropological history. Basically, they've looked back at the uh, diet which is natural for humans to consume. And there are people who erroneously think that we have actually evolved to eat meat. Well, to change, to actually evolve from one thing to another takes tens of millions of years. And we know 
that our diet about three and a half million years ago, and this is from scientific research done on the remains of creatures who lived at that time, we know that we were a frugivorous ape, a slender frugivorous ape whose principal diet was fruit, nuts, leaves, twigs, little tiny bits off the ends, the a buds. A frugivorous ape. Frugivorous, principally uh, eating about 80% of fruit and buds to produce the fruit. So it's like a tall, thin monkey that eats fruit yes, and vegetables. that's right. I think you've just described me perfectly. <laughs> yes, Paul. <laughs> Serious action must be taken on climate change within this decade.